tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello friends, this is a tutorial about materials. Uh, I'm looking for a nice texture and I'm in the wiki commons which is commons.wikimedia.org and brocade is a nice word for textures and patterns and you see lots of them here and um, how about this one? It's nice and large, 3000 by 4000 pixels, that's a good start anyway. It is um, the own work of Dadero and it's licensed via Creative Commons CC01.0 in the universal public domain because it's that old neoclassical furnishing fabric detail, Les Quatre Parties du Monde, Lyon in France around 1785 silk lamps really nice and uh, we use the highest resolution because in computer animation you should start with the highest resolution you can always go back to a lower resolution so when I click here on 3000 uh, whatever pixels I get this image and I click again then I get the whole texture range here and with the right mouse button I save the image in the source image folder of my Maya project. Now I'm back to Maya and in order to apply it to geometry I choose a simple, I'm on the uh, curved surfaces, just a simple plane. Now this plane obviously, press F to frame it, uh, is square and the image is not square. So let's go back to our image here we see that the resolution is basically 180 by 240 and we use that combination of numbers to uh, create our geometry in a dimension which fits exactly to that image so it's 180 to 240 and uh, what we do is we go here and the scale 180 this is the y, it goes up, it doesn't matter for us, and 240 now. Now it's gone, no it isn't, you press F again and you see a gigantic object here, uh, much too big for compared to the grid we have, so what we'll do is we go here and instead of 180 we just type in 1.8 and instead of 240 we just type in 2.4 and when we press F now we have that just well proportioned object here and now we'll map our image to that object right mouse click new material and we create an Arnold standard surface shader we need something to light this scene and um, for that purpose go to Arnold lights and we create an area light the light sits here we move it a little bit to the back I'm pretty familiar with the area light I would recommend to change the exposure to 2 and untick the normalize button here and then you should get a nice rendering and you can do it either here Arnold render so you see that surface here or you go to renderer and Arnold and then you get this pop-up window and you press the run button so you get basically the same difference is that you can pick objects now and change things if you like okay we have a standard surface shader and here in the attribute editor you find that shader when you pick that object you find the shader it's the standard surface shader which we have here and the typical thing to map our object onto that surface now is choosing the base color it's on in the base section and it's the color so we click on the checkerboard icon and the create render node windows opens 
and here we choose file and that's a standard procedure because we're not mapping some kind of mathematical uh, equation with a nice texture description on it but a file a picture so we, we always need to go to file and the it's getting a little bit more dim because it doesn't know what kind of file uh, it needs and here are the file attributes just to keep you updated here we're not in the AI standard surface shader tab anymore we're in the file with a place to the texture section here and we need to map it with an image and here I find the neoclassical whatever and here you see our object in the scene this is a standard mapping process and you see that it is a little bit glossy and that it's dimmer uh, in this direction because our light sits here and we're currently rendering more or less in real time because we here in the Arnold render section if we go back to the viewport we see white until we click here and then we see the same thing this is good for most purposes until you really need to go to rendering or displacement mapping which we'll get to in, in just a few minutes we want to deform this flat surface just a little bit currently the when we right mouse click and to check the control vertices we have control vertices all around our object but uh, not in the middle so we need go back to right mouse click object mode we need more geometry we go to modeling because it's a modeling thing and under surfaces you find all the way down rebuild and use the option box because we want to tell Maya how many subdivisions we want to have in that uh, object I think the default is 4x4 four four, which, which we would be not bad for our purpose but how about going to 40x40 40 40? and I apply this and close it and now you see lots of points here and when I right mouse click control vertex now I can select a couple of vertices like the ones here and raise this a little bit higher and go back to object mode and now I need a rendering in order to see things a little bit better so I go back to the Arnold render it's so glossy because we have glossiness in the scene which is called specularity here in Arnold we can reduce the specularity weight from one which is totally strong to all over the place to uh, very little uh, or to zero and in order to see the effect properly let's select the shader that deselects the geometry and now we lower this weight from one to zero and then it gets totally unspecular matte so to say very nice indeed now we raise the intensity of the area light just a little bit from 2 to 3 go back to our surface go back to our shader which is not here right now we need to these icons and we've mapped the color now and uh, next thing we're going to do is we'll change the metalness and uh, let's select it here and raise the metalness amount you see the the object gets much darker and now you see that the metal is working on it highly reflective this depends very strongly on the light let's deactivate the grid for now and this is quite an amazing view don't you think and when we r reduce the metalness to almost zero we get this kind of touch here it's different from the specularity the specularity makes the object shine but the metalness makes it <laughs> look like a flat metal now we want to go down to the geometry usually this tab is closed and if you open it and here you add a bump map and uh, the bump map is a fake elevation map and 
We use the bump map with exactly that picture now by clicking on this icon here. Go into the file and here we have the bump and here is the bump value which is yellow, underlined yellow, because we currently have an input here from a file which we find here. And it wants an image name just like before and here we give it the neoclassical image. And now re-rendering it makes this whole texture lo look like a real texture. And since we have a good resolution, this is just amazing how detailed it looks. You have the woven pattern here due to the bump map. The bump map doesn't really provide a real elevation. It's, it, it fakes the elevation. Uh, if we look at, at the whole object from the side, it's totally flat. I mean, it's a deformed object, our plane, but uh, apart from that, nothing happens here. But this is very nice indeed, and this is much more than enough for a computer game, for example, where your fighter or your hero gets close to a wall with this kind of pattern, and then he sees all the woven structures. It's cheap to render, so to say. It d doesn't take very long to render. If we want to get rid of that bump map, actually I don't want to, but I, for this purpose, f purpose of this tutorial, I need to get rid of it. So we go back here and write on the word bump value, right mouse click and break the connection. So we have that flat image again because now I want to show you how to create a displacement map which is a drastic map really of uh, displacement with the same image again so we go back here we're back at the the AI standard surface shader you need to navigate here from one place to another and um, we don't have the bump map anymore we navigate one step further back and here is the top entry of our shader, of our material. We have a surface material which is called AI Standard Surface 1. It's that one, what you currently see. We don't have a volume material. We don't have a volume anyway, but this would be good for fire or for clouds, for example. And this is for displacement. And displacement is what I just said, the real deformation of that object with an image file. So we click here. We choose a file and here we find the file and now nothing has changed here although we're rendering in the viewport with Arnold. Well that's not a bug it's just um, well a very delicate thing just changed. Let's go back to the viewport and let's go back to Arnold. Now Arnold needs to think about it and pr provides us with this strange object. Let's move our camera back and you see that quite amazing structure. This is a displacement map. Looks beautiful but doesn't have to do anything with our brocade structure. Now I introduce an Arnold sky dome light. It makes the whole scene brighter. I don't want that much intensity, so I reduce it to 0 0.2. And I don't want to see the lights in the scene, but I want to use the light uh, influence. So I go to Show and deactivate lights here. So I just don't see them, but they still do work. I look at it from the top. I sort of get an impression of a brocade but not really, it's just too massive. And in order to get this organized a little bit better, I need to go back to my displacement map. So click here. This is the original surface, the green outline here. And here you find the AI standard surface shader. 
that's our color it's not the displacement now we go back here one step higher in the hierarchy and this is our file here and when we click here we see what we can do with that file let's select that node in order to deselect the green object here and when we go down here we see we have an exposure under color ba balance maybe this is closed so you need to open color balance we have exposure and alpha gain and I would recommend you to use the alpha gain it's currently set to 1 that means uh, the black and white values which are responsible for the elevations here is working 100% and now we reduce this and you see the whole object gets much flatter but we still have elevation and now you see our structure again the displacement influence is so massive that you can really reduce the alpha gain quite a bit to 0 0.05 for example it's still a real elevation so when you get closer to it it's not a fake woven structure now it's a real woven structure and you need that high resolution in order to actually see it here at the edge you see it clearly that it is an elevation the object is totally unshiny because we don't have metalness and we have no specularity in there so as a final touch I want to add the specularity here so this is the sky dome light attribute editor we need to click here in order to get to our standard surface shader which is here let's select it in order to deselect this part here and go all the way up again specularity is currently set to zero let's give specularity a color and we choose a file and guess what kind of file we're going to use further up here we can enter our neoclassical brocade structure the weight is set to zero so it's actually not there at all but now we can raise the weight and see some specularity appear here And it's only reflecting light in the areas which are darker so the, that greenish tint here is reflecting is much more uh, producing much more specularity than the raised structures here the elevated structures when we raise this to one the effect is more clear now now the woven structure looks more metallic there's lots of other things you can play with uh, like the transmission of light the subsurface scattering the coating and something which I always like a lot is sheen I did several tutorials about sheen this is just a lovely way to texture things so this ends the sexy part of this material study will enter the less sexy part now which has to do with organization select this object here and go to the standard surface shader and to the color this is the image we have for the color this is this image and we have the placement node here it tells Maya how to place that image on that surface and it basically says it repeats it in both dimensions u and v one time that means we have it once in the scene if you now choose two by two you run into a problem with all the other structures you have the file four times now one two three four but 
you don't have the displacement map according to that so the whole woven structure is basically gone it sits somewhere else and the same with the specularity when you go to this icon here it opens the hypershade window and now I don't want to show you how to get this fixed but that I show you the problem uh, you have place 2d texture nodes and file nodes and this is the same file as this file this file and this file so during all our file mappings we produced four times the same file but we only need it once and if you only have it once and change the placement node all the other placements will go with it that means what you need to do is check the connections here start with the place 2d texture 1 which is our first image here and this goes into the base color now you look at place 2d texture 4 for example and with the same image and delete them but before deleting them you'll check where the information comes from and where it goes it goes from out color to specular color so delete this and use the out color and go to the specular color now so this is the way you go ahead with these things this for example goes into the displacement shader you can hook this into the displacement shader as well and then you get the same result and you you get rid of all the files here you just had four now you have only three if you continue with this you only have one and when you change the placement node for one you will change the placement for all of them complicated not really it's so much fun bye bye